I'm going to work through an example on on be able to get a transfer function between my output in this case it's y and a disturbance d and also a set point uh, ysp okay so uh, this is uh, what we're going to be using for this is uh, block what's called block diagram um, algebra okay so we have a, a complicated um, feedback control loop and we're going to be able to reduce that down to just a transfer function that relates my output y and uh, my inputs d and ysp so in the, let me just go ahead and explain this uh, block diagram first this is uh, a controller and it operates off of an error okay between my ysp and uh, uh, something that, that's that's in a feedback loop Okay, this is my manipulated variable, a thing that I can actually change in my process, the actuator. Uh, this is my process, this is a, a disturbance uh, transfer function. And, uh, and, and this, this right here, okay, if you didn't have, if you didn't have this, it would be a standard feedback control loop. But this is actually a process model um, of my process. And uh, what I'm doing is running these two in parallel, my actual process and then my model. And then I'm taking a difference between those two, and that's actually what the controller operates on. Okay, the thing that if I have a perfect model, the thing that would change that would then be my disturbance. Okay, so I have um, you know a couple other simplifying assumptions, just my valve and my my measurement. Those are just set equal to one. They're typically start of a uh, part of a, a standard uh, you know feedback control. Um, and, and what we want to do is go ahead and derive the closed loop transfer functions for both the servo, okay, so that's going to be y over ysp, and then also for the, the regulator problems as well. The regulator problem, just disturbance uh, rejection, regulating to a constant set point. This one, it just means uh, you know, changing set points. Okay, so I, um, let me go ahead and, and uh, first of all, uh, one of the things I like to do is just create some intermediate uh, stream names here. I'm just going to add Z here. You could add another one here, like for example X here if you wanted to. And, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and write um, an algebraic expression for all of my variables that are not inputs. Okay, so this disturbance, this is an input. Okay, my disturbance is an input. Something I can measure but I can't necessarily change. That's what the controller is going to try to reject uh, to keep my Y, my output value, at the uh, a set point. Okay, so this is my set point that I'm trying to control to. Um, okay, so uh, what I what I need to do is just go ahead and write um, an algebraic expression for all of my variables that are not inputs. Okay, so let me go ahead and just start with e. So e is going to equal y s p minus z. Okay, so I have a summation here with a negative sign here. Don't forget about that negative sign. Um, and then I have a u value. My u is just going to be equal to gc times e. Okay, and then let me go ahead and do uh, y now. Okay, so y is going to be a combination of these two. This one is going to be gd times d, and this one is going to be gp times u. Okay, and so y is going to just equal gd times d plus gp times u. Okay, and then uh, this this one down here is just going to be GP tilde times U, and th and then I'm going to be taking a difference between those two, and that's going to equal Z. Okay, so Z is going to equal Y minus GP tilde times U. Okay, so one one thing to to notice now is that we have um, you know four equations here, and and the things that we want in our final expression are just Y YSP and D. So we don't want E or Z or U or any of these other intermediate values. We just want some, an expression that's just a function of those. And and so what we need to do is is eliminate um, you know just by substitution any of those other intermediate variables. And one thing to to note on these block diagrams whenever you have something like this where you know it's splitting off like U um, you typically just need to solve for that one, and uh, and 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 also in terms of of these variables right here. Um, but just isolate u first of all, and then you can substitute that in 
uh, later. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just take our U, and, and I've got my value for E right above there. I'm just going to go ahead and substitute that in. And so U is going to equal GC times YSP minus Z. Okay, now I see Z right here. Let me just go ahead and take this one and, and substitute that one in as well. GC YSP, um, and that's going to be minus Y, and then plus GP tilde times U. Okay, so now I have an expression here that just has U and any of these allowable variables that I, that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply GC through, bring my U over onto this side. Okay, so I have U times 1, and then that's going to be minus GC, GP tilde, okay, and, and that's going to equal, and then I have uh, GC times YSP minus GCY. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and divide it, divide it out, um, and so I've got GC, YSP minus GCY divided by 1 minus GCGP tilde. Okay, so I've got my expression for U right here. And if you notice right here for my, my expression for Y, my output, it's it has just all of these allowable variables except for U. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute U back in uh, to that expression. And, uh, and then I'll have my final expression for my, my transfer functions after a little bit of a rearrangement. Okay, so that's going to be uh, GP. Okay, and then times this quantity here, GCYSP minus GCY. Um, you know, it's really easy to make mistakes as you're going through this, so you just have to double check, uh, just go back after you've written it out and, and just make sure you haven't made any sign mistakes or left out a variable. Um, you know, multiplying through is, is, is typically one of the areas where uh, a lot of people make mistakes. They, they forget to multiply GC through, for example. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do now is um, I need to get Y onto that side of the expression. Let me go ahead and just multiply through this denominator um, on both sides of, of the equation. Okay, so 1 minus GC, GP tilde. Okay, equals G, uh, GD times D plus GP, GC, Y, S, P minus GP, GC, Y. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring this one over onto that side. Okay, Y, 1 minus GC, GP tilde, and then plus GP, GC. Okay, and then I'm almost there. I just have to uh, separate these out. Okay, and uh, GP, GC, Y, S, P, and then I'll go ahead and divide this denominator over onto both sides, and I'll have my, my transfer functions, my overall transfer functions. What I'll do is, first of all, I'll just go ahead and assume that my set point doesn't change. It's just my disturbance that changes, and, and so I'm just going to get, um, okay, ooh, you know what? I forgot to uh, multiply this over as well. I needed to multiply this. Um, over here to the GD side, okay. So, so let me let me go ahead and do that really quick, okay. This I multiplied it over here by the Y. I forgot to multiply it uh, right here as well, okay. So I'm just going to put a little arrow there, and then I'll just go ahead and write it out right here. One minus GC GP tilde, okay. And uh, let me get the overall transfer functions now. So I have Y over D is one minus GC GP uh, tilde, okay, times GD divided by this denominator, GP tilde plus GP GC. Okay, so there's one transfer function um, that's, uh, that's right there. Uh, and then my other one is Y over Y SP, and that one's just going to be GP GC. 1 minus GC, GP, tilde plus GP, GC. Okay, so now I have my overall transfer function. So if I have a step in my disturbance or some other signal, I know what my Y is going to be for this closed loop transfer function. And the same thing with the YSP. If I change my set point, 
I know exactly um, how that's uh, going to change the output.